I would like to tell you somewhat about one of the projects that we have been involved with, and it's called Tackle Teachers Aids for Creating Content for Learning Environments. Um, and you see the number two, which actually means that this was the second Tackle project we have been doing. This one has already been concluded and we have just recently started uh, Tackle Tree. So there's sort of a continuum of, uh, of projects, which is one of the ways in which we are trying to deal with the sustainability uh, issue. Just come up with a, another project improving on the previous one. I think that's not um, unimportant. Um, let me see how this thing works. No. That's the next one? Oh, okay. All right. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Funded by the EU. They, no, they, they give us money. They never take responsibility. I should have added that as well. Um, but actually, it's nice to work with the EU and that gets some things uh, done. Um, some of our partners, the EU didn't do the work. These are the partners who did do the work. So we had people from uh, basically uh, all over um, uh, Europe as we did in the first uh, tackle project. This is about just a few words on the first tackle uh, project and project and I brought uh, this copy. I'll just actually I don't want to travel back home with this so I'll just leave it out there uh, tonight or tomorrow. Grab whatever you would like to uh, grab. But this one is a little bit outdated. Um, this is the first one we did and I forgot when we actually did this one, a um, couple of years ago, 2000, 2000 something, well, I don't see it. Um, but there were some problems, some issues with this. This was hugely um, successful. So, so uh, tens, literally tens of thousands of copies of this book have been uh, distributed all over uh, Europe for free, paid for by the uh, by the um, EU, and this was sort of a handbook for teachers wanting to introduce ICT into their practice. Really low level. Actually, the fact we decided to print this thing had to do with it. We wanted to make the threshold for people to start looking into this as low as possible, and we knew of course that just providing this in a digital format uh, might not sort of bring the people, the teachers we were addressing uh, to this, uh, to this uh, resource. And at the time also we, we thought we needed to sort of explain a lot of things. So there's for example a chapter here on the pedagogy of e-learning. We have another one on learning environments and on uh, networks and communities. And what we found was that that was not what the teachers were sort of looking um, looking for. Teachers being teaching, teachers, they sort of wanted, and I don't mean this in a, in a nasty way, but they wanted a quick fix. They wanted sort of an easy access, tell me how to do this, show me how to do this, and then I'll see what I can do with it. They, they, they were not really interested in uh, the context. But still, there were plenty of uh, examples, and that was sort of what uh, teachers were uh, looking for. After a couple of years, and that's of course not unusual when you do something in the IT field, the examples that we had here were just outdated. Uh, either some of the tools we had introduced were no longer uh, available, uh, or they had been replaced by much, power, much more powerful and, uh, and interesting, uh, interesting uh, tools. And another thing was the remark that we got from the teachers was, well, okay, we still have to do a lot of translation here in terms of, okay, you have this general introduction for all teachers who want to use ICT in their practice, but I'm a geography teacher and you are explaining here something about how to create a little movie or whatever, and how am I as a geography teacher now going to use that in the context of my course? So, um, as marketing people tell us, listen to your customers. Uh, so we did, and actually uh, we decided uh, in Tackle 2, and let me move on to that one. Uh, actually, there's one missing. Uh, we decided to create actually five books, much, more, much closer to, that, let's say, a cluster of, um, of um, subjects that uh, teachers uh, might be interested in. 
for example, and that's why I noticed that there's one missing, this one is on uh, technology. We have one on primary education, one is dealing with STEM, uh, arts and culture, and the humanities, and there's culture, and there's also core uh, skills. Um, and I'll actually zoom in to the core skills now. Um, but okay, what was sort of the interesting thing about this second version? Yes, there was still a very short, a very brief introduction to, let's say, the uh, pedagogy and the didactics of using ICTs in a classroom, but many more examples um, tested, all of them have been tested, uh, it's more than a hundred here, they have been sort of embedded in um, examples of, um, of a course, so it's no longer just a tool, it's really the tool in, the, in, in, a, in a context. But so as I said, all of them are tested, all of the resources in the book are free, or at least have a version that is available as uh, freeware, and uh, all of them are uh, accessible, and by that I mean we've tried to come up with tools that will not be blocked by servers uh, in a school, that will not be blocked by some policy, uh, that don't require at, uh, as less as possible a separate login so that students can just go there and use it. Okay? That was sort of the, the, the context of this new uh, set. It's been out for a while. Um, it's available uh, on the website. Uh, so we have a website, uh, tackle2.eu. You can download all the books from there. Um, and I believe it's still an option to, to uh, order some of them in certain uh, languages. Um, online, we've also created a community, and actually, it's quite quite active. I mean, people go there, uh, give comments, list new tools they've discovered. So it's becoming an online community that people, that teachers, um, actually um, use. And we have not given up on something that was really successful in the first tackle uh, uh, project. We we are still offering uh, training courses, which we offer all across uh, Europe and. Um, we'll need to see how this works out with the new funding scheme. Uh, but so this has, these courses have been attended by many, many, many uh, people. Several hundreds uh, of people have attended these, uh, uh, these courses. Now, let me zoom in. I mean, I, there's no point in me just going through the book and telling you about these resources. So let me zoom in on one specific book. Um, and I've selected this one because this is a little spiel with it that, that I think really connects to the theme of this team uh, conference. Uh, so you know what core skills are, uh, core competences are. Um, they're just sort of uh, yeah, coming uh, from uh, the EU, sort of put forward as, as important skills for participation as active citizens. Um, and actually, here as well, there's one missing. Okay. <laughs> I'll make a new version with eight core competences. But let me zoom in a little bit on communication in, uh, in foreign languages, because as we all experience ourselves, that's really crucial in terms of our participation in this uh, network of different cultures and languages and identities that uh, Europe is really uh, about. Um, and so we've, we've done, actually we've done plenty of these little uh, outbursts starting from the Tackle project, but so let me zoom in on a specific one. Um, so language learning, um, increasingly important, and well, European Commission says, okay, it would be nice if everybody would know at least two foreign languages. I don't know how realistic that is, but let's go for one, at least one foreign language. Um, and, and go with the flow of foreign languages are uh, important. We know, of course, that uh, with the migration, uh, worldwide migra migration, actually, uh, mastery of a foreign language is crucial in terms of uh, successful uh, migration. And uh, increasingly, also in education, we find that, that for, uh, for students at all levels, their 
uh, language of instruction is not their mother tongue. And that's increasingly creating a sort of a fuzzy notion of do I understand, do I not really understand, I need to write a paper, can I express what I want to say, is this, will I be evaluated on sort of my lack of uh, knowledge of my language of instruction because I'm just less sophisticated in what I can express. So there's really a number of, um, of issues uh, here. There are some changes in language learning, and I've listed just a few. We are really moving from a grammar-based to a functional approach of second language um, learning. Focus on reception is shifting towards focus, focus on production. An individual, uh, a concept of sort of language learning is something you do on your, by yourself is shifting towards, no, it's something you do in a group, communication is essential. Um, a functional um, paradigm is shifting towards a task-based paradigm embedded in social constructivism. Cutting some corners here, but that's a, a trend. Uh, there are some technological changes, chalk, overhead projector, beamer, smartboard. Textbook and grammar books and dictionaries are increasingly being replaced by the internet. Not all the time, but increasingly. Um, the concept of knowledge is shifting towards the concept of competences, and so on, uh, and so forth. So, what we did is we created a little uh, contest. Um, and so you will, this is a, a little contest that uses the tackle framework and some of the resources here. And we sort of, this is part of our um, valorization and sustainability um, uh, approach. In a specific school, in one of our schools, a center for adult education. So let me go a little faster here. Okay, so we have team A. Uh, Birgit, Birgit is head of the Department of uh, Foreign Languages, uh, Dutch as a second language, but also other foreign languages, and she's a skeptic. Let me sort of jump ahead. She used to be a skeptic about the value of ICTs, uh, in the added value of ICTs in um, language learning. And she was a skeptic partly because of lack of skills and techni technophobia on her part, um, and on, on the part of, of many of the teachers she was uh, working with. Um, she dreaded the idea of having to download stuff, install programs, uh, and how do I do this with my laptop, how do I do this on my other devices I have, so she was sort of worried about that. She was also afraid that it would take more time to include ICTs in language learning than if you sort of uh, not abandoned them altogether, but sort of kept it at a low uh, level of, uh, of, uh, of uh, presence. Um, and so, yes, she had this idea that ICTs in language learning could answer some of the minor challenges. For example, yes, there, are, there is software around that can help me to do some vocabulary, uh, vocabulary stuff. Um, or perhaps I can check some of my translations using Google Translate or whatever, sometimes. So she had a really sort of uh, low level idea of the possible uh, impact of, or the possible role of ICTs in uh, language learning. Um, the other team, Jeroen, head of the media services, a real believer. And one of the, of the people who contributed to the Tackle 2 uh, project and actually wrote uh, and checked many of the programs and the tools that we uh, included here. So here is the challenge. There is a lot of good ICT uh, stuff around, like we know about learning management systems, we know about learning paths, we use Moodle, so we know those, we use them. Uh, yes, they are. We have some interesting uh, additional uh, exercises on the Moodle. We have a repository with some videos and listening materials, and we can offer some workshops, and students can put together an e-portfolio. But can we move beyond? That was sort of the, the challenge uh, based on the, on the Tackle uh, project. And a little bit more specific. Okay. 
So, Jeroen, the believer, was challenged to convince Birgit and her team of language teachers that blended and distance learning actually could make a difference and add value comparing it to the good old classroom moving beyond and even outperform face to face. So that was really quite a challenge. It was not just, oh, this is useful, this is nice. No, no, we can do better using ICTs than when we just use a face to face approach of language learning. There were some technical requirements, uh, just Wi-Fi and brow browser-based, so no installation of, uh, of, pro of actual programs. Uh, easy to use. Uh, oh, okay, and then some technical thing about language learning. Address, it, it needs to address the 10 principles of structured language learning. Okay? And the four or five aspects of language, uh, uh, speaking, listening, um, writing, uh, etc. So all of those needed to be uh, included based on the approach of the tackle. So what did we do? And I'll just, okay, so we have these, teen, these 10 uh, principles. You'll find them, I'm not going to go through them, you'll find them in the presentation in the paper. And then Jeroen went to work with his team, and what he did was he took the 10 principles, you see them uh, on the top, then um, did, did took all the, the, the principles of, uh, of language learning and sort of started to find tools to identify tools for each of the different uh, for each of the different uh, uh, yeah, squares in the in the matrix okay and what they ended up was a tingling with a bunch of tools addressing the whole uh, the whole uh, uh, challenge. Conclusion. So, Birgit and her team conceded, A, that yes, there are ample tools and teaching strategies to apply all the principles of structured language learning in an online learning context. They didn't believe that when they started off. Now, after the project, they said, okay, we, uh, we agree, they are there. And they identified the added value of technology enhanced learning compared to the face to face. Okay? Differentiate, more differentiation anytime, anywhere. Better uh, tools to address informal and non formal and include that in the learning process. Collaboration, interaction, peer to peer, self directed learning, more self assessment, and more fun. So, our conclusion uh, was that the use of ICTs allows for better and stronger learning environments in which the students. Cre the student creates and produces instead of consumes. So better and stronger compared to face-to-face. -to -face. So in a blended uh, context. Thank you.